Hey everybody, this is John Fessmeyer. I uh, haven't done a video in a while, um, but I hope you enjoyed the Johnny the Creature Shop videos that I that I do have up. Uh, I figured it'd be cool to do um, some uh, sort of tutorial videos. I'm really just kind of showing how I do things, but if it helps people, I think that's great. So what I want to show here is Z AppLink, uh, really great feature in uh, ZBrush. I used this a lot. I use it a lot, so. I use it a lot on my demo reel in creating the textures for my characters, and I'm going to show a little bit of how I do that now. So you see right here, I'm, I'm still using uh, ZBrush 4R4, even though 4R5 recently came out. And the reason is because Z AppLink, which I am using uh, currently quite a lot on a... Z AppLink. Yeah, Z AppLink. That's my son Clark. He likes being part of the audio. So I use that um, quite a lot in texturing, and since it's... Uh, has a bug right now in 4R5. I'm waiting for that to be fixed and Pixelogic um, is great about responding to that sort of thing and they've already said on the uh, forums that, that they uh, they are going to have a fix for that in January. So I'm looking forward to using 4R5 but still 4R4 for now. Z AppLink. I'm going to show people how to use that. So normally Z AppLink is right here under the document menu. Um, I have customized, as you can see, my interface for how I like it. And, you know, as I think of new things I want to add, I have lots of room up here and here and here to still add stuff. Um, so um, it's usually there under document, but I have popped it down over here uh, so I can just click super easy right there. So what you'll see happens when Z App Link links is I have it set up for Photoshop for uh, Photoshop CS6. And if you have uh, are using ZBrush and you don't have ZAppLink set up for uh, Photoshop yet or a Photoshop compatible program, it'll give you the option to do that. So um, here, see I have 4R4 four four here and 4R5 here. Okay, so we're in Photoshop. Oop. Um, and what ZAppLink does After is, effects. just a minute Clark, is it, After I'll use that when I do, a, do the video. Effects. <laughs> so, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so anyway, what I do is, what it does is it takes the uh, ZBrush, f actually flattens, it's showing the 3D uh, model with texture on it, but it then flattens it, and it drops all of that down to a canvas and pops that over to uh, ZBrush and this file, tempzapplinkexport.psd. That's what it always calls it. I actually, I don't know if there's a way to change that and there's really ne no need for me to do it. Um, and as you can see over here, it has three layers. This one is the shading that is on top. Um, the, this shows how the, the shadows. So you can turn that off if you just want to see the texture. Um, although you don't, don't edit that. And then you have the actual layer with the coloring, and as you can see, it has the coloring and it has, has a mask for what the background is and what the actual thing is. And then here's just the, the background. So you want to, you don't want to change these layers. One thing you can do is you can uh, create a new layer. Say I want to put a tattoo on her hand or, or something. I can add um, a layer on top of this, but then I will have to, I would have to merge it with this layer and keep them in the middle and make sure this is named layer one before I save it. So that's uh, one little, that's how you would do that. But basically what this allows me to do is I can then go in and obviously you can see this, this hand, uh, I've painted on the textures and I'm not going to go into how I do that in this video, but I may in another. Um, and I, and uh, you know, it's pretty splotchy, but it's a start and this is where I can, I can start editing it and fixing, fixing it. Sometimes you do want to just hide that and start painting on here. Let's go back a little bit. Um, try to kind of, I want to kind of even it out. I want to keep some of the redness on her fingers, but I want to lighten it for the rest. And I want to keep obviously these kind of, uh, you know, wrinkles on her fingers here. So I won't do too much at the moment um, because you don't need to see me doing all kinds of work just to get the idea of how this works. So as you can see, I've made some changes and I'll go back and I'll, I'll work on it after I make this video. Um, and I've, I've cleaned it up a very tiny bit, but a little. So then um, what I'll do, I'll pop this shading back on. Sometimes you'll have weird color things there. It's going to be okay when it goes in a ZBrush. And I simply fi go File, Save. And I Alt-Tab back to ZBrush. 
Um, occasionally it'll do this. It'll ask if I want to go back with it unchanged or if I want to recheck for the saved file. Since I did save the file and I do want the changes, I'm going to say recheck. And then it's going to do this. Normally it should just do this if you tab over, but occasionally you get the other. So I'm going to say re-enter ZBrush. And what you'll see is the new texture. There you go. The fix is applied. And then I say pickup. It's still in uh, 2D mode or possibly 2.5D mode. If you use ZBrush, you know what that means. Um, so pick up now, and it will apply it to the actual 3D model. And it may look slightly different. Yeah, a little bit different in the shading here and stuff, but for the most part, it fixed it. Um, the reason it's a little different here is because, if you notice, I'll click this again, I have fade checked. What fade does is when the model starts curving around the edges, it doesn't apply as much to that. It fades, it fades it out. The reason is because, if you think about it this way, if I um, if it were to apply the, the texture going that way, you would, get, you would get streaking because it would be kind of a flat on. Okay, just a minute, Clark. I already did it. Oh, I'll do it one more time so you can see. Okay, and then you will click drop now so you can change it. And I will do that in just a minute. But anyway, that's basically yeah. how... That's basically how you uh, use the app link. If you have questions, you can post them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and that's, that's how I do that. So.